right, here we go. We're getting ready. First part, first thing to do is find those pieces that have hinges on them. And you can see this is already pre-hinged. That control surface, we need to get rid of these hinges. We're gonna put hinges in later. So what you wanna do is, I hope you have a Dremel tool, because if you don't, you're gonna need one. There's other ways of getting those out. I personally love the Dremel tool. So let me show you how to do it, because we need it to look like this when it's done. Now this is a piece that wasn't hinged. It wasn't pre-hinged. It's pre-drilled, and that's good. We'll use those holes for, the, for what we're doing. This is the rudder controller that controls your rudder. It's the rudder fin, just in case you didn't know. Okay, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the Dremel bit, and it has a drill bit on it. Now this Dremel with the drill, we're gonna just take out that the the hinge part of the of the robard. It's right where the pin is, and just so watch what we're gonna do. That's all we're gonna take. And I'm doing it to just expose. The metal. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see the metal inside of there. And that's the metal hinge that's putting them together. Let's go to the third one. At this point, I've got all the hinges down to the metal pin that's in there. Now watch what happens. All I have to do is just spread it apart, and there we go. So if you look, let's see if you can zoom in a little bit into that. There's a metal pin right there that's holding it all together. And because, I don't know if you can see, because I've exposed the pin, it just pops right out of the hinge. Now what I also like to use is I got a pair of dikes here. If you can zoom out a little bit and see that. These pair of dikes, you can get these at Fry's Electronics. They're hard to find because everybody wants them. They're always out of stock. They're $15. You can take a 16 penny nail and cut it in half with these dikes. These dikes are amazing. So all I'm gonna do is just give a quick trim and take off a piece of that hinge so I kind of have a flat surface to work with. Just cut it right off. And we still have the hinge inside, so this is going to be another thing we're going to need to do. Again, I'm going to take, you can see in this hinge, it's on the, they're kind of protruding out slightly, but let's cut those out. Let's just cut those off. Again, I'm just looking to make them flat because they don't pull out. They're, these things are put in with epoxy. I'm going to have to drill these out. Okay, that's it. So there's at least taking those hinges off. Okay, now that we've got these cut off, now we need to drill a hole in here. We've got a large drill that matches our dowel. And we've got a small drill that we're gonna initially do or drill out. So we need to drill out these hinges. So I'm going to hold this in a vise. And we're going to grab our handy dandy bolt. And I'm going to go right in the center of that hinge. This Robart hinge, and we're going to have to put it in here. But to do that, We've got to set the depth. We've got to take the one that's in there out. Now if we look, I can tell you that it goes down to about there. How do we adjust for that? How do we know? I like using Sharpies because I, I can take them off very easily. I know that if I drill to that line right there, I have removed the hinge. Or at least I've gone down to the bottom of it. So here we go. Start drilling. You can see the line. Are you zoomed in? You can see the line. And 
and on there. Okay, so what we have is we've got a small hole. I'm going to show that to you. I don't know if you can see that. But so there's a small hole. There's still a good part of that, but that's my guide hole. It's my going to a bigger size. So my first one is a 16th inch drill. Okay. Now I'm going to a 1 8th. Now because I have that hole, this is going to be a little easier to guide me through. And again, one of the things we can do is we could set the depth very easily by taking our pen because I'm using the old drill that I had and I can say well there's my line and, and I know I'm all the way through okay now we have a sixteenth a one eighth now we're going to go to the actual size to get out that hinge. I measured it out and I'm using a 1364 drill. My hinge is 1364 at its widest point. So, so let's go ahead and measure. And you have drill in here. Using that bigger one, you can see, look at that. That just came right out. Well, we've done a couple hinges and I've learned a couple things. First of all, I was showing you how to do it with the drill bit. The Dremel is the best tool to do this. The drill bit works great if you have to repair the hinge, but the best thing to use is a, your handy dandy, trusty Dremel stylus. This thing is great, keeps a charge for at least two or three hours of constant working time. Uh, easy to hold. This thing is awesome. So get yourself one of these. What I've done is I've taken out the hinges for the flaps. This was all hinged up. Obviously the best thing to get is something that doesn't have hinges, but most of these arfs are hinged, or at least most of the plane is hinged. As you can see, I've taken these out and it was real simple. Make sure you get yourself a robot gear, a robot hinge to be able to put it in and test it out, and make sure your positioning is right, as you can see. And I mean, voila! That's just going to be a perfect fit. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do. It's so simple. I've got the aileron here. We've got the hinge in here. I've busted the hinge off of this, as we showed. You just use your Dremel, get in here and just go up the hinge at that, that point to be able to remove the pin that's in there and they'll pop right out like we showed. But now what we have to do is we have to get, we have to drill that out. And drilling it out was the easiest way. You can even do this hound hill. Now what's gonna be neat is you're gonna be able to actually watch this get drilled out and you won't believe how easy this is. So, I get in. Okay, we don't want to rush this. Right now I've got a little bit of that coming out, you can see. Now if I look at the measurement for this, you can see it's going to be about the same. So I want to go about the depth of this. And I set that before to make sure the depth was accurate. So as I put this in and I start drilling, it'll stop at that depth and I'll know where to go. So here we go, let's continue.
Okay, I'm getting pretty close. You can see, what's nice about this being open right now, I haven't put the sheet on yet, is you can see it's starting to go in. So as we continue, let's see if I can do this so you're able to actually see what's going on. You can see it just slowly just takes it out. Now, what's great about it being open like this is you're able to, in this case, all I have to do is just cut that out because it's not a, it's not enclosed. It's not in, like these were. I had to really get into these, and I had to really go in and get these things at an angle. See, I had to go straight in to get everything out. But that depth is what showed me because it was a blind drill. But here I can see what I'm doing. So all I have to do, I can just take that out right there now if I want, just by cutting the sides of this. Because there really isn't that much in there. And man, that was a lot easier than using that drill bit. I'm gonna tell you, that was almost perfect. That hinge now, look how tight that hinge is. I can just I can put that hinge back in with epoxy. I don't have to redrill. I don't have to put a dowel. And the dowel would be good if this hinge were to break on off to the side. A good way of replacing this is putting that dowel like we did previously, like I showed you. But if you can take your time and you could take this Dremel and you could get that out and you would be a nice clean hole. And you get that hole nice and clean in there, your Robart hinge will just fit perfectly in there. And look at that. The thing's ready to be epoxied. That's the way to do a Robart hinge. And to drill.